السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نسلی و نسلم علی رسول کریم و علیہ و اصحاب ہی و من تب احم بھی احسان الا یوم الدین فقد قول اللہ تبارک و تعالی فل قرآن الکریم و الفرقان الحمید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولا تتخذوا آیات اللہ حزوا وذکروا نعمت اللہ علیکم وما انزل علیکم من الكتاب والحکمت یعیدکم به واتقوا اللہ وعلموا ان اللہ بکل شیئن علیم صدق اللہ مولانا العظیم وصدق رسوله النبی الكریم کما قال ثلاث جدہن جدہن وحزلہن حزلن وحزلہن حزلن النکاح والطلاق والرجع او کما قال صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الاقدتا من لسان یفقہ قولی رب یسر ولا تعسر وتم من بالخیر وبک نستعین یا فتاح رب یزدنی علما سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد My dear respected gathering brothers and sisters in Islam We praise and we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us life in the first month the month of Muharram we live to see the day of Ashura and uh, alhamdulillah today is the land 11th of Dhul of Muharram many people would have been fasting either the 9th and 10th or the 10th and the 11th we should try and endeavor and aspire inshallah to fast as much as possible in this month it is known as Shahrullahi al-Muharram the month of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great rewards for those who fast in this month my dear respected brothers and elders sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a perfect and a kamil deen. We as human beings, we are narcis. We are defective. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is perfect. And anything attributed to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. The Holy Quran, it is perfect because it is not created by a human being. It is ghayru makhluq. It is not created. Allah is the khaliq. Anything that is attached to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghayru makhluk, it is not created. So this is why the Holy Quran, it is not created, the words of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be created. And it is perfect, try to find a fault, you will never try to find a fault. The Arabs who were superb with regards to poetry, they could not find a fault. They understood that this cannot be a madman, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reciting such ayats, we have never heard, we have never heard nor have we ever seen. This cannot be, a, pers a human being cannot recite something like this. Because the Arabs, they were great poets. Anything in attachment to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Likewise, the deen of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is perfect, my dear respected brothers and sisters. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Talab al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. To seek knowledge is compulsory upon every muslim. And by extension, it means every Muslim are also ala kulli Muslim, but Muslim is not part of the hadith. That is fabricated according to the muhaddithin. However, talab al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim, it means that each and every single male and each and every single female have to seek knowledge. Otherwise, we can be trying to practice upon something that is perfect, and we will think that we are doing that which is perfect, but we are really doing that which is imperfect, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We will be doing something that is narcis. We will be performing salah many years of our lives and we will think that we are performing salah properly. And we were really performing salah without wudu because we did not know that that is something that breaks wudu. And therefore we had no salah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تقبل صلاة بغير تهور Salah will not be accepted without purity. So therefore no matter how many years a person said, I did not know. We were supposed to know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and the rest is up to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is across the board, my dear respected brothers and sisters. 
whether it is with regards to taharat purification, whether it is with regards to salah, whether it is with regards to hajj, whether it is with regards to what we eat, what we consume, each and every single thing we have to learn about it in Islam. With regards to nikah, with regards to marriage, with regards to divorce, we have to learn the laws, we have to learn the masail. Otherwise, many a times it happens that people are living with one another, understood to be husband and wife, recognized by the public as husband and wife, but re in reality they are divorced in the sight of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. They did not seek knowledge. They did not seek knowledge, so therefore they did not recognize that me and my wife had a quarrel when we were 25 years of age. 45 years of age, we are living, we have five children, six children, ten children, as the case may be. Unfortunately, we now heard a bayan, we now heard a lecture, we now read a kitab, we now read a book, and we have now realized that 25 years ago, we were divorced and we never did anything. The type of divorce that it was, we never did anything to revoke that divorce, or... It was possible that within the time of revoking, we did not revoke it, and we only came back afterwards. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today I would like to touch upon a few ayahs of the Holy Quran wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about divorce in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about divorce and He speaks about marriage. And this perfect deen of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, An nikahu min sunnati. That nikah is from his sunnah. And it is something that we ought to do. It is something that we ought to do. But it's not something that we ought to do blindly, my dear respected brothers and sisters. It is not something that we ought to do blindly. There are guidelines that a person has to adopt with regards to when he wants to get married. It is not about the testosterone is there. With regards to males, we are getting that feeling and instruments are moving, and therefore a man should get married. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us the guidelines. With regards to the woman also, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke about the ayyima. When her match is found, then do not delay with regards to the marriage. And that is something that each and every father, each and every wali, also our women folk, they must understand that when the time is right, and the compatible person comes about, then they should get their children married, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Otherwise, it would lead to fitness. Otherwise, it will lead to fitness that our children, our young children are facing right now. Our elderly brothers and sisters are facing right now. Why? Because they are not educating themselves about this perfect deen of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always say, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that Islam teaches a lot about psychology. The ulama and the tulama, they, tulama they, say, they say this. Why do they say this? Because we learn it. We study it. We study it. We are a seeker of knowledge. If a person calls us mufti, addresses us with mufti, a person addresses us by maulana, we first and foremost must understand that we do not know it all. And if the persons who are sitting in a madrasa and they, re they, are reading books for the they are reading books day and night or they are trying to give fatwas to the best of their abilities, they understand how ignorant they are. We understand how ignorant we are with regards to law and masail. Much more for those people who are not, with regards to, not in books day and night, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Much more for those people who are not in books day and night. Living life, living as Muslims, eating as Muslims, dressing as Muslims, living as a married couple as Muslims. And, mashallah, some people feel so contented with regards to the laws of Islam, but they don't know. When you tell them years afterwards, they have eat such and such meat that was mechanically slaughtered, but according to many of the scholars of Islam, who um, apparently the... The correct fatwa based upon the Holy Quran is that mechanical slaughter is not accepted in the sight of Allah. But there are many people who eat mechanical, mechanical slaught, mechanically slaughtered chicken and they think it to be permissible. That is upon the shoulders of those ulama who say it is permissible, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But a great majority of the ulama are of the opinion that it is not permissible. So the point that we are making is that 10 years afterwards a person says, we used to eat that chicken and no problem. 
No problem. We are supposed to seek knowledge. We are supposed to seek knowledge, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And the point that we are making is that there are so many laws to be learned. So many laws to be learned so that our eating will be halal, our drinking will be halal, our clothing will be halal, our marriage will be halal, our children will be considered as legitimate children, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Our children will be considered as legitimate children. And we have to learn all these laws. It is not just about getting into it. It's not just about eating. It's about learning about eating. It's not just about getting married. It is about learning to get married. Learning about marriage. Learning about the laws of marriage. We may have heard that with regards to the laws of salah, it becomes compulsory when we have to perform salah. With regards to the laws of fasting, we are in the month of Muharram. It is not compulsory to fast. So therefore, no problem. For the fasting, a person does not know that taking something, that eating does not break the fast. No problem, it's okay not to know it now. But be sure when the month of Ramadan comes, you learn that masla. Be sure that when the month of Ramadan comes, you learn that masla. Otherwise, your fast will be corrupt. And you did not act in accordance to the Holy Quran, in accordance to the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To seek knowledge, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We did not, we did not seek knowledge. And it is, it is compulsory upon male, female, men and women, as Maulana Shiraz was mentioning about maktab. Maulana Shiraz was mentioning about maktab. It starts from the end, my dear respected brothers and sisters. It doesn't start when a person becomes old and you start to tell them about the intri intricate messiahs about divorce. And he says, you know what, Mulvi Sahib, when I reach that bridge, we'll cross it. When I think I reach that with my, with my spouse, I will come and ask you, inshallah. It starts at that young age when we start to educate our children about laws, about stories of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, about performance of salah. It does not start when a young man becomes a hardback man and now he enters into marriage. He is abusing his wife. They are getting into quarrels and day and night he is divorcing his wife. He did not know that he, he gave his wife three talaqs. He gave his wife three talaqs and when that happens, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when a person gives their wife three talaqs, then you know what? They can't live with their wife. They, can't live, they cannot live with your wife. The Holy Quran mentions, at talaqu marratan, talaq is twice. Talaq is twice. Why does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, at talaqu wahidatan aw at talaqu thalatha? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at talaqu marratan, twice. Then going on further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, la yahillu lahu hatta tankiha zawjan ghayra. It is not permissible. It is not permissible for him to get married to her until, he marry, until she marries another person. Until she marries another person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Holy Quran. This is only the Quran, not the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet. That if a woman, she is given two divorces, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hold on to her with goodness or leave her with goodness. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, as we said, it is very perfect. And it tells us to hold on with her with goodness or let her go with goodness. Hold on to her with goodness or let her go with goodness. The commentators of the Holy Quran mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat because in the days of ignorance, people, and after the days of ignorance, when Islam came, people would just be giving divorce, giving divorce, giving divorce. People will just be giving divorce. And it got out of hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, at talaqu marratan. Twice, you only have up until two times. As we say, three strikes. After the third strike, you are out. You are out. A next man comes in the play, if your wife wants to get married to another man, or if she wants to get married to you. My dear respected brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is just to sensitize us to the laws of the Holy Quran, the laws that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also endorsed. The laws that? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also endorsed. Remember, we are speaking about a perfect deen. Many a times we say, ad-deenu yusrun. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ad-deenu yusrun. Deen is easy. Deen is easy. But when we start to talk about all these laws, people start to say, don't confuffle us. We don't know about that. Don't tell us about that. My dear respected brothers and sisters, whether we know or not, it has an implication in our lives. Whether we know or not, whether anyone addresses us with a title or not, the law has an implication in our lives. Why? Allah said so. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so. 
we do not live a carefree life. We are not liberal to the extent whereby we are not bounded by laws. Muslims are bounded by laws, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And whether we know it or not, it takes effect. Whether we know it or not, it takes effect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says two divorces. After that, strike three. You cannot be with your wife. You cannot be with your wife. But you know what happens, my dear respected brothers and sisters? Guilt trip. We feel sorry. You look at the children. We look at the children and we say, no way. I can't leave my son. I can't allow another man to come in the house with my wife and live with my wife and my son has to wake up to that. A lot of different technical messiahs, my dear respected brothers and sisters. With regards to if a woman marries an unmahram of this child, she loses custody. It goes even further than that and further than that. But it is not only for the muftis, it is not only for the maulanas, it is not only for the ulama and the children who are sitting in madras madrasas. It is for each and every single one of us to learn. Why? We could be going against the commands of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This perfect deen of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is perfect for you and I, but we have to learn about it in order to implement it into our lives. If we do not, we will be making a mistake. Running on our own emotions. A man running against his ego and he says, no, that cannot be the law. And when that happens and one mufti tells him something, one maulana tells him something, he says, no, I will go by another maulana. I will go by another Maulana. You know why? This Maulana, he has a fault. He has a fault. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we all have faults. Many Muftis and many Maulanas have faults. Do not look at their fa the faults of the Maulanas and the Muftis. Look at what they are telling you. Is it from Quran? Is it from Sunnah? If it, from is, if it is from Quran and Sunnah, then try to verify that. Why? So that you will ensure that you are acting upon the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A drunken man can teach us something, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So much more for a crooked alim. A man who is drunk can watch a young man and tell him, don't drink alcohol. Is that not a wise statement, my dear respected brothers and sisters, from a drunkard? From a drunkard. A crooked maulana, a crooked mufti. Learn something from him, inshallah. We are not perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us as perfect. And we as human beings, the alims and the non-alims, we have faults. But... No matter what fault we have, it is not an excuse for not knowing. It is not an excuse for not knowing. So if we perform 20 years of salah without wudu, then mind you, after every rakat, we better brace our backs and start to perform those salah as qadha. You know why? We can sit and talk a lot about masail and a lot about laws. When the time for pain, whether it is in the form of a kidney stone, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to, provide, to purify us, may Allah save us. Whether it is in a form of someone attacks us, ma'ad Allah, we get some wound and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to purify our sins. Or whether it is because we are six feet under and angels are beating us with big hammers or we are smelling and we are, we are tasting of the sour tastes of Jahannam. Or whether it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to reach the fire of hell, ma'ad Allah, we will come to learn one day, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We will surely come to learn one day. And I know that I have a short space of time. But I thought, inshallah, that why I, I would throw out a few messiles so that each and every single one of us would learn about them. Because many a man today is married, but he is not married in the sight of Allah. Many a man thinks he's married in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he is not married. Many a young man and many a young woman, they want to get married. And because their parents are, not, are preventing them from getting married, they are committing unlawful relations. And we as Muslims, man, woman and child, we have to learn about these things. We have to learn about these, thing, these things because as we started with, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. And when we enter into that marriage, when we enter into that marriage, there's a lot to learn. What can I say? What can I not say? What is considered to be a divorce when a, a man says a clear divorce and he, and he says an, an ambiguous divorce? Either way a divorce occurs. Either way a divorce occurs. No matter how angry we are. No matter how angry we are. My dear respected brothers and sisters, one of the ayats that I have recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ huzwa. Do you take the signs of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as joke and as a play? Do you take the signs of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a joke and as a play? 
No, the signs of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something serious. It is something serious and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commentators mention, He revealed this ayat concerning the laws of marriage and divorce. Concerning the laws of marriage and divorce, because even at that time, in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people used to play with women. People used to do all sorts of things. Oh, if I can't have you, no one else can have you. So therefore, get married to her, divorce her. Then when it is almost time for her iddat, take her back. T oh, sorry, for her iddat had come to an end, they would take her back. It's like a woman was in prison. It's like a woman was in prison. In our time also, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it may have, have taken a different form, but men are trying to do the same thing. Whereby they go to America, leave a woman down here, two years, three years, ten years, no sexual relations, no husband, no maintenance. And he may have told us something before, is this woman married or not? Is this woman married or not? Or does a man keep her? When you call her and tell her, look, your, woman is, your wife is living in such a state. She needs a husband. She needs comfort. You have comfort across there. What about her? You have sexual gratification across there. What about her? My dear respected brothers and sisters, a man is sinning his soul across there. Possibly someone might be able to nullify the marriage. Or possibly he may have divorced his wife before on a telephone call. When she kept call him, calling him, he said she was nagging. He says she was nagging her. She says that she was begging and pleading with him for a divorce because she's down here and she wants to get a divorce. My dear respected brothers and sisters, it is a lot to speak about. It is a lot to learn about. Divorce itself without speaking about halala and without speaking about how a woman can become permissible again for her previous husband. It is a lot to speak about. It is a lot to speak about, and of course, it is our duty to speak about it, inshallah. I thought, inshallah, for a few minutes that I would try to sensitize myself firstly and the crowd that we would understand that there are so many problems in our Muslim ummah today. So many problems in our Muslim ummah today with regards to Muslim marriages, with, lega with regards to divorce. There are many women who have a cry that their husband, their husband is abusing them. As men, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ittaqullah. Fear Allah, we are not allowed to abuse women. And at the same time, we have to learn how to treat our women. As women, they have to learn how to treat the men, and they have to learn also how to be a wife. Men, has to, men have to learn how to be a husband. Our children have to learn how to be obedient to their fathers and their mothers, my dear respected brothers and sisters. But more so with regards to marriage and divorce. More so with regards to marriage and divorce, a man must know if his, if his child is legitimate, if he is living in a legitimate marriage, or if he has divorced his wife. A man must know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, what is it that he can say that it means that he cannot sleep with his wife anymore unless she says, I want you to be my husband again. Or a man must know if he can utter a certain word and by uttering that certain word, that certain divorce, it means he has a second chance. You kiss her, you hug her, you have a chance again. 20 minutes does not serve justice with regards to explaining these messiahs, my dear respected brothers and sisters. As I said, as a reminder for myself and for yourselves, inshallah, we have to learn about these messiahs. There are many problems in the Muslim ummah whereby there's a lot of divorces that are taking place, a lot of unjust things that are going on, a lot of tyranny, a lot of oppressions that are taking place in Muslim marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq whereby we can learn about this perfect and this kamil deen so that we can try at least to be a, a good human being, a good husband, women can be good wives inshallah, children can be good children. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you.